God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Right where you are, I want you to begin to clap your hands and begin to bless the Lord that you made it through Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. We, we're in another year, the whole year that we've been in a pandemic but the Lord has covered us, the Lord has blessed us. And so just give him praise right where you are. Begin to thank him and begin to bless him. Things could have been worse, but God said no. And so we're thankful today for salvation. We're thankful today for his Holy Spirit. How many of y'all are just glad that the Lord saved you? Amen. How many of y'all are glad that the Lord saved you? How many of y'all are just thankful for salvation on tonight? We praise the Lord for whom all blessings flow. We're thankful to God for just who he is in our life. I want you at this time to prepare to receive the word of the Lord on tonight. I want you to prepare to receive what God has for you. We're going to continue in the same vein that we were in on Sunday. I told uh, those that follow us online and those that are members in person, I told you all that we will continue in a series and because the Lord uh, took us in a different direction, not a different direction, but the service flowed uh, and, you know, uh, we didn't get a lot into where I had on the uh, paper. And so I want to share uh, from that and then just begin to uh, talk. And then um, we're going to try to get out of here. And then I'm going to ask that uh, when I'm done, that Elder would, uh, if I'm done doing offering, that Elder Nick would uh, offer uh, prayer and salvation. And we'll go from there. I'll open up and Elder, we ask that you close. So be ready for that. Amen. So I'm asking that all of you would please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, prepare your hearts as we go to the throne of grace that we obtain mercy uh, in the time of trouble. I want you to take, first of all, your device, take whatever you're on, and I want you to go to uh, our church's page. I want you to go to the church's page. Uh, if everyone would please take time to share uh, the, the service on tonight. Uh, share the actual live. Amen. Share that. We appreciate you all. God bless the saints that are online. God bless you, Sister Debbie. God bless you, Elder Walker. God bless you, Sister Michelle. God bless you, Sister Lois, Sister Danita, Sister Stacy. So good to see all of you that are on on tonight. God bless all of you. Thank you all for coming in and sharing. Thank you all for tagging people in. Please, as you come in, like and share of uh, this broadcast. So let's do it together. So what I'm going to do is I always go to the bottom and I click share. And then I just write a quick post. Now, it's my understanding that Facebook is stopping watch party, right? I got noted. I hope did you all get notifications. I got notifications saying that, hey, we're stopping watch party sometime in April. So if you need to save any of your watch parties, please do that. But, but so that's why I always just share it as a post to my page and that people from my page would follow uh, whatever's going on. So uh, please join us for hashtag capital L-I-F-E capital S-T-U-D-Y life study. All right, and I post it and it's, it's being shared. Thank you. Amen. Sister Danita says she's sharing it through um, <clears throat> Messenger. Appreciate you so much. So please, ma'am, please, sir, let's let's join in. Let's get those numbers up. Thank you all. Let's let's come in. God bless you, Elder Edwards. God bless you again, Elder Walker, Elder Mosey. God bless Elder Van, the preachers that stand with me in ministry. We appreciate you all so much. We appreciate Lady Futrell. She's here, so we honor her. We honor the leading lady. Uh, God bless Lady Futrell. God bless all the women of the Lord that serve in ministry, all of our evangelists, missionaries, all of our missionary deaconess missionaries. We appreciate you. And to our four aspiring missionaries that are going up for uh, um, license and capping, we say God bless to you all. Let's let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you for this is the day that you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll enter to your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, and we'll be thankful unto you and bless your name. For you are good. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be lifted up. You're worthy to be exalted. We thank you that things are well as they are. We thank you that the grass withereth and the flowers fade away, but it's your word that's going to stand forever. Thank you is your word that we've hid in our heart that we might not sin against thee. If there be any sin on tonight, we ask that you forgive us for sin. 
sin that we've omitted, sins that we've committed. Uh, continue to cover us in your son's blood. Help us even here to get those things right. We bless you, oh God, for, for we thankful for grace on tonight. For if we continue to sin, that grace may abound, you forbid. But God, we thank you that grace does abound. Uh, because of sin. And God, we thank you for the grace. We thank you for mercy, God, that's been shed abroad in our hearts. We thank that the love of God, it compels us. The love of God constrains us. And we bless your holy name for it. We ask that you bless us to receive your word on tonight. Help us to take it and apply it on good ground. Help us to respond in faith to the words that we've been hearing uh, this last few months. And God, we thank you that as we're going into this new season of spring, that you're blessing us, God. God, we thank you for causing us to be in health, uh, great health, help us to walk in uh, wealth. We thank you for it now. We praise you for it. Uh, as the government is stimulating the economy by giving funding and blessing uh, individuals with funding. God, we thank you that you have already given us stimulus package, that whatever we bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is already loose in heaven. And we praise you for it now. We bless you and we thank you for it now. Bless these visitors that are on the stream. Bless those that are on Zoom. We praise you, God, and we thank you for who you are. We bless your holy and your righteous name. We thank you, God, for turning things around in the lives of your people. If there be any sickness, God, you heal, you deliver and set free. We pray for Rhonda. We pray now, God, for uh, just my Aunt Teresa. We pray for my Aunt Candy. We pray that you would heal, deliver, and set free. We send your word to whatever state uh, our visitors may be in, Minnesota, Georgia, oh God, New York, Bless them and strengthen them now. Those that are in this region here in St. Louis, God bless and strengthen. Bless our church. Continue to add to our church as such to be saved. We pray now for the young men that I've reached out to, those reached out to me, that you will fix the situations that they're in. God, you know who I'm talking about, and I send your word to do it just now. Restore unto them the joy of their salvation. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We praise you for what you're doing and what you're about to do. We say yes to your will, yes to your way. Thank you, God, that you've rebuked the devour for our sake, that you've cast devils out of our mind, and you've anointed us to say yes to the counsel of your will. Not faith in you, but the faith of you to call those things that be not as though they were. We give your name, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. The people of the Lord said yes, and it is so. Yes, and it is so. Come on, let's clap our hands if you believe God. Clap your hands if you believe God. Come on, let me see you. Let me uh, put some hearts, put some likes if you believe uh, God. I'm asking that you would turn to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. If you would go to the book of Luke. Luke. And we're thankful for, amen, Missionary Fariga. We appreciate you for assisting us. Amen. She's already there. Amen. Let's read it from the Passion Translation, right? Let's read it from the Passion Translation, but whatever version you have. But when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then you will see them fastened. And he gave them this illustration that no one rips up a new garment to make patches for an old, worn out one. If you tear up the new to make a patch for the old, it will not match the old garment. Verse 37 says, and who pours new wine into an old wine skin? If someone did, the what? The old wine skin would burst and the new wine would be lost. New wine must always be poured into new wine skin, skins, yet you say the old ways are better, and you refuse to even taste the new wine that I bring. The word of the Lord is blessed. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Tonight, we want to continue uh, where we left off on Sunday. We're dealing with that triple A threat. Uh, those of you that are not necessarily familiar with all creation, amen, and our theme for the year is champion of change. We're a triple A threat. What are we doing? We're going to acknowledge, we're going to adjust, and we're going to applaud. And so this series is Embracing the Change. Can you type that? Can you say that wherever you are? Embracing the Change. We're dealing with part two. We're dealing with embracing the change. And you all know, if you didn't hear my introductory remarks about Luke, you can go back and look at Sunday's broadcast. I believe Sunday was the 14th. So you can go back and listen to that and deal with uh, the introduction that I talked about. Uh, we talked about uh, Luke. We talked about uh, the, 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 my intro dealt with the blind man who was driving behind the wheel of a car. And uh, if that blind man kept wrecking your car so sudden, uh, you kept going into the ditch, uh, kept changing lanes and kept hitting inanimate objects. 
uh, and, and goes through the stop signs, what would you do? Would you give it a fresh coat of paint? Would you get it fixed and let him get back into the car? No, certainly not. You, would, you wouldn't say my car needs a new uh, tune-up. My car needs a new fresh paint job. My car needs a new set of tires. No, you would say uh, I, I, my car needs a what? A new driver. And so uh, I believe that's what we do in life. We keep rushing uh, in life. We, 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 if we're honest with ourselves, we keep making the same mistakes, uh, keep going into the same ditches, keep trying to and keep failing. And sometimes we come to the beginning of a new year and we say what well, we're going to change and what's going to happen. We make, as I've stated before, so many times those New Year's resolutions. And I'm going to patch this thing up. I'm going to make a new start. I'm going to apply a new coat of fresh paint on my car. I'm going to clean up my house. I'm going to do all these things. But the reality of it is what we really need is to have a change in our life. We need a fresh start. And I believe the title of tonight's message, Embracing the Change, this series that we're talking about in Luke chapter 5, really verse 33 to 39, we see that the gospel begins with a fresh start. Can somebody just lift your hands? Can somebody type on the screen and say fresh start? fresh start, new start. It's something that's birthed uh, in our lives. We need to have not just a new start, but we need to re rework who we are, a new self, a new you, right? And, and, and then ultimately build a new structure around us so that we ultimately have a new seat at where God is taking us. And so it's time to, to reshape. It's time to allow God to redo some things in our lives. And so we talked on last Sunday about the new start, a new change. We talked about how in Luke's gospel, he dealt with Matthew, the tax collector, and how he dealt with the prostitute and washed his feet with her tears, the rich young ruler who went away sorrowful, the one who touched him with the hem of his garden. And we really, garment, we talked about how Luke really deals with the gospel of individuality. Can you say that with me? Gospel of individuality. Luke's writings deals with individuals as they relates to Jesus. Or more importantly, Luke's gospel deals with individuals who relate to Jesus and Jesus in turn relates to them. And so it's important to understand that if you look at Matthew, Matthew, uh, you see him talking about Jesus as um, if you want to see Jesus as that Messiah, you want to read Matthew. If you want to see Jesus as that powerful Savior, you definitely, Elder Nick, want to read Mark. If you want to see Jesus as the Son of God, then you should, Sister Fariga, read John. But if you want to see Jesus as a man for all men, can you put that on your screen, a man for all humanity or a man for all men? When we say men, we're talking about humanity, right? Uh, it's not gender specific we're talking about in general humanity when we talk about jesus being a man for humanity we need to look at the book of luke right it's little wonder that someone called luke the gospel of the underdog he, he he's the writer of the gospel of the underdog because i believe that luke presents jesus uh as a as the god of close encounters i, I need you to just wave your hand i need you to just begin to praise god that the Lord delivered you from some close encounters. Ah, that'll preach right there. If I had time, I, I, I'd tell somebody to take notes from me so I could preach it. But I'm here today to tell you, Jesus is the God of close encounters. He shows us that he's just not concerned uh, about us because he's distant, he's far away in the cosmic space, in the celestial heavens, but he's a God who is up close and in person. I need somebody just to praise God that Jesus Christ is up close and personal. He's up close to save me, and he's personal to keep me out of my stuff. Not only did he save me, but how many of y'all know that he's a keeper? I feel something going on here. Uh, and, and this is a good note because it touches down with the heart of this gospel. And we look at the uniqueness, I believe that is Dr. Luke, who shows Christ not only in his deity, but he shows him in his divinity. I'm going to say it again. He shows Christ in his deity, but he also shows him in his divinity. Go ahead and say it for the sake of time and say he's 100% God and he's 100% man. I see you all getting those numbers up. Let's see if we can get over 30 on tonight. Uh, he's, 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 he's the deity of God and he, he's divine as uh, God and he's, he, he's also 100% man. Uh, but I'm here today to tell you that Luke gives us a clear view of the heart and the mind of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the heart of God is in the gospel of Luke. Luke gives us this picture of Jesus, not only as a teacher, not only as a storyteller, but Jesus Christ as a man among men and man among the masses. And in this chapter, in this book, in Luke, 
more than any other gospel writer, we see Jesus Christ up close and we see him personal. I'm just here today to tell you that God is up to something. I, I wish I had somebody that can just share that with me, that God is up to something. And I like one bishop say, and you're right in the middle of it. And so when we see Luke writing, we see Jesus with an unusual and unscripted encounters uh, with unlikely people. I'm going to say that with me. Unusual. Say that with me. Unusual, unscripted, and unlikely people. I, 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 he, Jesus is with unusual and unscripted un encounters with unlikely people. Uh, I just need you to put yourself in there instead of saying people. Uh, I, I, I was in an unusual situation. My situation was unscripted and I was unlikely to be the one. <laughs> that, that'll, that, that'll make me shout right there. I was unusual. I was unscripted. And watch this. I was unlikely. But what he do? He reversed it and gave me uncommon favor. Come on. There it is. Unusual, unscripted, and unlikely who got uncommon favor. And so we see these unusual backgrounds. Watch this, Elder, this is what we see. Luke gives us this description of unusual things, unusual backgrounds, unusual occupations, and unusual circumstances that have to have unusual needs met. I, I hope you're getting this teaching on tonight. I, 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 I hope you're really getting this. Unusual backgrounds, unusual occupations, and unusual circumstances. And watch this, I have some unusual needs. I had some unusual needs. I, I didn't know how I was going to make it. I had some unusual needs. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but but God somehow or another fixed it for me. Is there anybody that can say God fixed it for me? I'm so thankful that he fixed it for us. He fixed it for us. Uh, uh, and so on tonight, I want you to really know that when we look at verse 1 through 11, we see Christ's encounter with Simon Peter, who couldn't catch fish. You just preached this recently, uh, about four or five months ago in November, uh, who couldn't catch fish. We've taught all night long. We have what? Caught nothing, right, for the day, right? And then in Luke verse, verses 12 through 16, that same chapter, uh, we see him touching an and, uh, and touching an outcast, an unclean leper who's made whole. Jesus wasn't even supposed to be dealing with them right? But yet and still, he's made whole. Uh, unusual situations, unusual people. A fisherman who knows how to fish, but didn't catch fish. He's classified to be able to catch fish, but couldn't do it that particular day. It was unusual circumstances. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says they caught no thing, not even a boot, not even weeds, not even trash, yet alone fish. They didn't even catch shrimp. They didn't, <laughs> no thing. He touched the leper. One supposed to touch the leper. One supposed to lay hands on him, right? Unusual situations, right? Verse 12 through 16, an unclean leper, he's made whole. Verse 17 through 26, Jesus is teaching and four men bring their crippled fan on a pallet and, to, and bring them uh, in front of Jesus and Jesus makes them whole. Verse 27 to 32, right before the text where we started, we have the report of a man named Levi. Levi is who? The tax collector, a member of what we would say the IRS. As I said on Sunday, what is he? A citizen of Israel, but he's also an employee of Rome. Nobody likes him because he was deemed a hustler and a crook. Jesus sees him at the tax booth, and all he says for Riga is simply this, come and follow me. I'm so glad that Jesus spoke those four words to my spirit. Come, sister Sutton, and follow me. This is an unusual twist. Why? Because in scene one, he's employing an unlearned fisherman like Peter and giving them assignments in the kingdom. In scene two, he touches a leper, an outcast leper, healing them and make them whole. In scene three, he raises up a crippled man. I know that's redundancy, but I like doing some old English. He raises up a crippled man and Jewish idolatry suggested that the man had been crippled for one of two reasons. One, either his parents had sinned, or two, since Virgil, he had sinned. And it should be left that way, lest one go against God, they said. But Jesus, who is the Son of God, who's fully God and fully man, says, I will forgive sin and heal him. And now Levi, who is a publican, a tax collector, a fraud, a hustler, I'm trying to drive this point, a publican, a tax collector, a fraud, 
and a hustler is asked to follow Jesus. And Levi obliged and follows Jesus and God to his son Jesus. Change his name from Levi to Matthew. He's no longer a publican, but he's a disciple. I need you to just say this with me. I'm no longer what they said I was, but I'm now a disciple. You don't know. I feel something here when I went through my discipline process. You wasn't there when I laid out before the Lord and gave it to the Lord. You may have saw me in my old days but I thank God that I heard a word that says, if any man, any woman be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Think about it. How many people in the gospel saints were changed forever by the stranger from Galilee? There was Mary Magdalene who had been tormented perhaps for years by seven demons. She became sick and tired of living like that. I feel something staring up, Elder. And coming to Christ, she put him in the driver's seat of her life and was changed forever. Think of John Mark, a wealthy young man who was searching for something significant to do with his life. I want you to think of Nicodemus, the most popular teacher in Israel and a member of the Jewish ruling council. Sometimes I would like to go through the gospel, just make a list of those individuals that we read about and that we've studied about whose lives were changed forever because their paths crossed that of the master. I'm, 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 I'm thankful for, as I said on Sunday, uh, my songs my grandmother sings, songs that I asked Sister Vanna sing so, uh, sometimes, a uh, song that Gloria uh, Orr's mother, uh, Mother Dorothy Orr, who at the time was our district superintendent's uh, wife in Western District Number 3. I'm going way back because some of y'all just know the names of the district. Now uh, our district is... So we're back in Frank J. Hay Hayden District, but back in the day that we used to be Western District number three. And before we was Western District number three, Elder Larratt was the superintendent and was the evangelist district. And, and she would sing a song. Uh, we always talk about he'll take your gloom. But the song goes that one man sat along beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind and the light he could not see. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and bid the darkness flee. I just wish I I had somebody that could type on the screen that could speak over yourself and say, I'm so glad that Jesus came and he bid the darkness in my life to flee. Come on, say it. I'm so glad that Jesus came and that he bid the darkness in my life to flee. There are people in this setting on the, tonight in the Zoom room, in the Facebook live room, in the YouTube room. I'm going to act like I'm in church. You're in the room tonight and you have the same testimony like millions around the world that the Lord Jesus is in the light changing business and he can change you but like Fariga told us in November how deep are you willing to go and get what's yours how willing how willing how how much are you willing to give up in your unusualness for God to give you the uncommon favor I'm here today to tell you that God has a way of doing things. Come on, say that with me. God has a way of doing things. And so he changes this man's life. He says the same thing to you and I. He says, come and follow me. I believe that's the word of the Lord on tonight. In order to brace this change, you have to be willing to follow him. And verse 29 is an interesting thing that Matthew does. He invites Jesus. Watch this. This is where we left off on Sunday. He invites Jesus into his house to celebrate his new life, hooking up with Jesus. And so let me just park long enough to say that uh, real people invite Jesus into their house. Jesus is in my house. Jesus should be in your house. He should be in our house. Come on, can you just say, Jesus should be in my house. He's here. Uh, he's here. The reason why he's in this house where I live in O'Fallon is because he's in this temple. He's in this tabernacle. Come on, come on. Somebody say Jesus is in the house. But not only is he there, but he's, Matthew is, not only is Jesus there, but Matthew's old friends are there. Tax collectors. They showed up at the celebration. What's interesting is, contrary to how the church would teach you, Jesus doesn't leave the celebration because the public can show up. He stays there. You know, some of us, we go to family events and we try to get there first before all the other people come so we can say we showed our face. But but watch this. I'm, I'm saved enough that I can abstain from what they do. Now, if they get on my nerves, because they get on my nerves, I can leave. But watch this. Some of us so deep and so religious that we forget that Jesus himself stayed at the party. I just wish you, I wish I could get some folk to realize that Jesus stayed at the party. Can somebody type that on the screen? It's in your text. It's in your Bible. Jesus stayed at the party. He stayed at the celebration. He stayed around the publicans. He stayed around the hustlers. He stayed around the thieves, right? 
He stays there. But do you know that no matter how much you're cool with Jesus and the relationship established with the father, you can always count on the devil to try to dispatch one of his imps and one of his employees to reign on the parade. So in this instance, we call them the Pharisees, as I said, Sunday, and the disciples of John the Baptist, right? Interestingly, they present their case and argument. They start out asking questions because they're upset by their own miserable reality of works-based theology. And can I just say right here, that's what's going on with some people in the church. They're upset with people in the church because they feel like they've worked towards what they have. And so because your theology is based on work, you're never going to move past your stingy mindset. You just missed it. Because your theology is based on work, you don't realize this really should be on your worship. You just missed it. And so you're stuck because you're working your way out. But the reality of it is you better learn how to worship your way out of this thing. I'm here today to tell you, and I rebuke the spirit in the church that thinks it's based on works. I'm tired of this mindset. And so I didn't really, I went there a little bit Sunday, but I'm going there. Y'all messed up and let me go through the fire. And they want to know, first of all, Farika, why does Jesus drink and sit with tax collectors and sinners? You just missed it. And second of all, why don't they fast as often as the disciples of John or the disciples of the Pharisees? And so the first question, Jesus says, a physician who came, he comes to save the sinners right? Whole folk don't need physicians. It's sick folk that need physicians. I'm here today to tell you the reality of it is some of y'all sick, but you're caught up in your work. That's why when you stop working, you see people dying. You just missed it. I'm messing up somebody's mindset right now. That's why some church folk, you take away their position, you take away their keys, you take away their alarm code, you take away their title, then you take away their works and they have no identity outside of what they Take my church, take my administrative assistant, take these, these, I know y'all can see my stuff, right? Take these degrees. It's still, you ain't gonna take Marquelo because Marquelo is saved. Marquelo is sanctified. Marquelo, see, some of us get mad when we don't hear titles, but the devil is a liar. I, the greatest title I have that I am just happy to know that I'm his child. I may not be everything. I may not be the best of anything, uh, but I'm just happy to know the songwriter says that I'm his child. Some of y'all, I rebuke right now that work-based mindset that you got to work your way out. The devil is a liar. I'm here today to tell you, you better learn how to worship your way. Are you listening to me? So the first question, he says, a physician who comes to save, comes to save sinners. And to the second, he says, the bridegroom who came to bring joy. Watch this. The reality of it is some folk are dead because they've worked their way out of it. But the reality of it is when you worship, you got joy. See, that's why you got folk that was mean. That's why you got church folk that was mean. They unhappy. They stuck in a marriage. And don't let them fool you. They may be in the car riding together, but they ain't living in the bedroom together. And, and, and they, they got a work-based relationship. Oh, my God. Because what you see out in the front is what goes on in the home and sometimes even worse. But when you have worship, when you base your walk off worship, watch this. You don't need to be validated. Watch this. As much as I love my wife, I don't need her to validate me in everything. Why? Because I have confidence in who God made me to be. But when you have work-based theology, work-based marriage, work-based relationship, you want to always be validated by what somebody do for you. My husband brought you flowers. So what? But he brought the other girl flowers too. My husband got me a car. So what? He bought the other girl a car too. My husband bought me a house. Do you not know that he got another family on the other side of town in the house that he bought too? So I'm not worried about what you think your work built up. I'm worried about worship. Worship will bring your husband home. Worship will make it do right. Worship will make your wife act right. Why? Because you're serving Jesus Christ. But when it's based off work, you want to look the part for people. Coordinate your outfit. Work-based theology. The devil is a liar. My identity ain't in my work. My identity is in my worship. Who am I helping tonight? So the gospel brings a new level of you. Come on, tell that to yourself. The, lot, the gospel uh, will bring a new level of me. So it's very, read verse 36. <clears throat> Just read verse 36. I want to read Bible. I want everybody to read verse 36. I'm going to take the screen down. I want everybody to read verse 36. What does it say? Verse 36 says, and he gave them this illustration. What does he do? No one rips up a new garment to patch, uh, to make patches for an old worn out one. Because if you tear up the new one to make patches for the old one, it would not match the old garment. Some of y'all are mixed matched. Uh, uh, you, you don't know if you want to work. You don't know if you want to worship. And so the reason why you're having problems in your walk, because you mismatch. Who, who, who am I helping tonight? Who, who am I helping tonight? You, you mismatch, right? 
you 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 don't know what you want to do. You, you just don't know. You, you just don't know. You don't know. You don't know. So you 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 flip flop. You just flip flop. That's what you are, right? So so what what's going on here? Uh, the the it's very common in the culture of that day because of the pervasive poverty to patch up old clothes and garments that were worn out, weren't then, right? We talked about even people being from the country, right? Uh, finding old patches for socks, old patches from other places to fix up the holes. But in the end of the day, people just throw them out and buy new ones for, they call it, it, it distress and they label it new fad and, and new styles to have holes in your clothes, right? The twist that we see in the 21st century. Right. So Jesus, as often he did, gave illustrations of ordinary images that were very familiar in that day to get them to understand. And I believe he understood that it's still prevalent for us today in that order to teach them and to give really a, what, what I would like to say, a postulate a spiritual truth. It could have been this as 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 you look at what Jesus was doing, I can imagine in my sanctified mind that he held up new garment and he had an old garment. And I believe that while he ministered on the scene to the masses, uh, this is what uh, Eugene Peterson says. Eugene Peterson offers uh, this, and he says, uh, in Jesus' word, no one cuts up fine silk scarf to patch old work clothes. You want fabrics that match. C can, can you say that, that I need fabrics that's going to match? Jesus says it doesn't make sense. It don't make sense to have mismatch, right? It, 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 it's, it, it doesn't make sense to take a pair of scissors and cut precious priceless silk and, and to cover the silk on your overalls. Hear me when I say this, you need overall from somewhere else to try to patch up that which you're trying to preserve. You don't cut up something new and put it on old. You don't cut up this fabric to try to make it fit on this fabric. No, that's, that's, that's wrong. It only ruins the good garment and it provides a patch that doesn't match the old one. It leaves both, watch this, the old garment and the new clothes useless and defunct. I believe that's what the church has done with a lot of our issues within denominationalism. Isn't it interesting? And, and I said I wasn't going to comment too much about this, but 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 I, I thought, God, I said, God, you gave me this word only to see how people are going back and forth about uh, an issue that uh, Kirk Franklin's son put out uh, recording his dad. Now, there are those of us in the church who have been taught this. There are those of us who've been taught that. But the reality of it is there's a mindset that says that's his personal business. I've done it before. I can relate. And so I have compassion. And then there's others who say, uh, uh, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That is what's, what's in you comes out and defiles you, right? I'm not here to, to debate any of that. All I'm here today to tell you is, even if you're on one of the sides of the fence, whether you, whether you agree, not necessarily agree with them, but whether you understand and give him sympathy and can relate because you've been there or you don't cuss, you don't have that issue, but, 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 but you thought he was wrong and this, that, and the other, and you know, he's been worldly for a long time. Have you felt about Kirk Franklin? That's neither here nor there. But I believe the issue is not about whether or not uh, he cussed or not. I believe it's to show how useless and dysfunctional the church can be sometimes. Yeah, I said it. My my church number is 314-521-2444, acnhfc at gmail.com. Yes, the church sometimes it proves with the mess that we see on social media, how sometimes we walk in uselessness and dysfunction. Not only that, but we patched up old garments and, and then it's washed and the new patch will shrink and tear away from the old, making it worse than what it was before. Why? Because all we're worried about is covering up the hole. That was Jesus' point. You worried about covering up the hole. You worried about patching it. But God says, don't you look at my scripture and see the revelation that you can't take that which is great and put it with something that's old. It don't match. And some of us get involved in conversations on social media. You comment about how people do things in the church when you got issues in your mind and not speaking. Uh-huh. You think because you didn't cuss. You think because you don't drink. You didn't smoke. But you gossip. 
right? And some of y'all in the church will gossip around people and, and think you okay, but the devil is a liar. You're just as wrong as the person that's cussing. You're just as wrong as the person is drinking. Hear me when I say this. And so what happens is we have different levels of sin and we try to make it like this is worse than that. But the reality of it is sin is sin. But the reality of it is you can be clothed with, 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 with covering your patches, but still be dysfunctional. Why? Because it don't look right. You got on overalls and got silk covering the, the hole. This is what the Pharisees tragically ignored. They were arrogant, just like some people in the church today. Just arrogant. You're just arrogant for no reason. Arrogant. Arrogant, right? You're arrogant, conceited, self-righteous. They wanted Jesus to conform to their religious ways of thinking and practicing their custom and traditions, but Jesus made it clear that this would never work out. Why? Because you can't take from what is new and stick it on what is old. The patch that was supposed to solve the problem will create a bigger problem, and Jesus was interested in reviving their old, hear me when I say this, hold on, buck your seatbelts, out-of-date religion that falls short of patching up people Rather, he was interested in hatching something completely new. Incidentally, the Bible often uses garments, clothing, and garb to watch this signify character and conduct. I believe it's the Apostle Paul that really fosters these ideology in Colossians 3 and 2. When you look at Colossians 3 and 2, when he says, clothe yourself with compassion, with what? With kindness, with humility, with gentleness, with patience. Isaiah even refers to, uh, to righteousness as a royal robe that we are to wear. That's why he even describes it as some people righteousness in and of itself outside of Jesus Christ is as filthy rags. I'm going to say it again. Colossians 3 and 12, drive this home. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And Isaiah refers to righteousness as being royal robe. So, so, so when man falls in the garden, he runs and hides himself, right? That's that's the amazing thing about uh, what 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 I see uh, sometimes in our societies, right? You you see men uh, just just we if we're not careful, y'all, we get so caught up. We get so caught up, y'all. We get so caught up when the reality of it is God is is looking at our heart. Do, do you know that? He's looking at our heart. He, he looks at our heart. And, and I'm so glad he does because when he looks at our heart, he lets us know that your heart can be changed, right? When you look at uh, this, this mindset, right? There, there are many people who have this patchwork, raggedy and approach to Christianity. A little bit here, a little dab there is good enough to qualify God to be pleased with me. And so we come to church, we we wear our religious rags, right? And, and I'm on, I'm on, I'm, I, I, I can't just not say it. I have, I have to, yeah, I have to be real, right? We, we, we deal with, we deal with uh, this, this, our religious rags, right? And, and, and what we do, we have religiosity to perform for two and a half hours, spiritual experience. Uh, and, and we do this stint only to go back to the parking lot and search for our own self-inflicted, I'm going to do it my way garments, right? And, and, and that's the problem. That, that's the problem that I see in our society, in our churches today. We, we come to church and we put on our religiosity and then we leave the church and we do what we want to do. But the reality of it is God is saying, I'm calling for and I'm requiring things to be done in such a way in this season that you have to church, are you listening to me? That you have to do it in a way where, where I'm going to be pleased, right? And so it's important to understand that we, we got this, uh, I'm going to do it my way attitude. We can just add Jesus to what we already have because we're going to get brand new garments anyway. Jesus is not an add-on. Can you say that with me? He's not an add-on, right? He's everything. And the whole message of the gospel is that we need Jesus uh, and we need to trade in our unrighteousness rags for righteous robes of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, I'm, I'm here today to tell you, uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, God had made, uh, I'm sorry, God made who he had, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become what? The righteousness of God. That's what it's for, y'all. That's what it's for.
all right? And so I, I want you to know, uh, you better be careful because there is a danger of mismatched religion. Come on, say that with me. I can't be mixed, mismatched, right? I can't be lopsided, right? And so what Jesus does, he expresses through the parable and the story that the gospel is unique. There it is. And it does for us what no other religion can do. It doesn't just patch us up. It changes us and it transforms us. Uh, unless you think I'm not talking to you, I invite you to think about what Paul said. He said, we wrestle what? Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual witness when in high places. Please put emphasis on this and don't skip over spiritual, spiritual wickedness. That wickedness that wear church clothes, okay? That wickedness wears badges and choir robes. That wickedness knows how to speak to you in an unknown tongue, but can rarely curse you out in good English. That wickedness that knows how to dance a whole dance and how to speak church talk, but says good morning to the persons, but won't say good morning to the person sitting on the same proof. That wickedness that knows how to carry a Bible, quote a little scripture, but will not read it knows how to lift up their hands, but they lift up their hands uh, contrary to what the word says. They lift their hands with wrath and with doubting. But God says in the word that you got to lift your hands without wrath and without doubting. The problem we face is not, here this is what I found out, y'all. The problem that we face is not in the world. Can I be honest? My problem that I face is in the church because we sought to patch up our new life. I can deal with people on my job because they ain't professing to be saved. I can deal with people that's across the street that live for me because they ain't professing to be saved. But you know what? It's those people that start asking me questions. But here, hear me when I say this. It it was It's church folk that gave me my problem. It's, it's church folk that gave me this gray hair. It's church folk that helped me get bald. It's church folk. It, it, so the problem is not the, the world. The problem is the church because we have sought to patch up our new life using old legal systems that only can give us a failed attempt to cover up the problem of our spiritual weakness. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it slower. The problem is not in the world. It's the church right? Because we sought to patch up our new life using old legal systems, things that didn't work, things that only give us a failed attempt to cover the problem of our spiritual weakness, right? And so in his book, um, Religion and the Gospel, uh, Lineman says there is a great difference between the two. Religion is man-made, but the gospel is God-given. I'm going to say it again. Religion is man-made, but the gospel is God-given. Religion is what man does for God, but the gospel is what the gospel, what God does for man. Religion is man trying to climb the ladder of his own self-righteousness with the hope of meeting God on the topmost rung, but the gospel is God coming down the ladder in the pre in an incarnation of Jesus Christ and meeting us right where we are as sinners, not on the highest ring, but God sent his son on the lowest ring. Religion is good views, but the gospel is the good news. Religion is good advice, but the gospel is the glorious announcement. Religion takes a man and leaves him as he is, but the gospel takes a man as he is and makes him what he ought to be. Religion ends in an outer reformation. Religion whitewashes. The gospel washes white. I'm here today to tell you I thank God for relationship because it's in relationship that I see the gospel. Why? Because religion often becomes a force, but the gospel, I'm sorry, a force, but the gospel is always the force. The power of God unto salvation. Why? To everyone that believeth. There may be many religions but there's only one gospel. Jesus said that the gospel and the gospel that we preach, we must go to all of the world. And not only that, here's my last point. The gospel gives us new structure. I'm here today to tell you, when you look at uh, what God is trying to do, he's trying to give us new structure. There's a story that goes of a man who, who wanted to buy property. And when they start talking about the property, the owner said, I'm going to clean all this stuff. Up. I'm going to do all of this. But 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 the man said, who was trying to buy, said, no, leave it as is. I'm going to knock everything down and I'm going to build it again. What we do in religion is try to build ourselves up. But God says, uh-uh. I'm going I'm to do something new in your life. I'm going to make you a new creation. I'm going to make you a new structure with a great foundation. I'm here today to tell you, I'm here today to tell you that God is going to do great things. This parable teaches us that we need to have a brand new self. The second illustration is this. The master teacher makes at the same point and adds that we need new structure. Matthew, if you read Matthew 37 um, and um, 38, um, 
it, it says, and no one pours new wine in, uh, into the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong scripture. I said Matthew, I'm, I'm not said Mark, I meant Luke, Luke 37 and 38. And no one pours new wines into old wine skins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The new wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into the, uh, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. To understand this parable, like those in the first century, we would have to go back in time. Wine was made by walking on grapes in a wine press. The juice flowed through a channel into the lower vessel where it was strained and eventually poured into wine skin. Well, Jesus, Jesus has not come to add new wine of any religious zest to our old life. This is what the Lord goes on to say. And no one pours new wine in old wine skin. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No new wine, uh, no, new wine must be put into new wine skins. Because if you drink, watch this, it, it, he says, and no, no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. Wine was kept in sheep skins. They were worked off the body of the animal without cutting into the skin so that only the apertures where the orifices were, the feet and the head had been. And these openings were bound shut and skin cured. Such wine skin, watch this, possessed certain elasticity, right? Elastic, right? when it was new so that when the new wine fermented the skin watch this what it was going to do it was going to expand so the old skin lasts really as long as the original supply so once that old wine was delivered you had to get rid of the skin right because it cracked so 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 the gospel lastly is going to give us a new not structure but not just structure but a new seat so Levi is using this banquet launch to launch his evangelistic campaign for Jesus. He feels that this is a good time to meet the Savior. I better have some of my old friends, tax collectors, sinners join me. That's his first instinct. When Jesus gets there, he's comfortable with sinners, and obviously they feel attracted to him. Some of us feel that holier than you are, the more you become repulsive to become around sinners. And that's what I've seen in the church. We look at folk funny. Now, I'm not saying folk can come to our church and act any kind of way. But what I am saying, uh, you got to remember what some of you once were, right? You turn your nose up at folk when you forgot you used to be stinky with liquor, women included, smoking cigarettes, right? Okay, can, can I be honest? Can I, can I go a little deep? How many of y'all been in sin that you smelled your own sin? Nobody was around you. You you left from where you was at and smelled yourself. Y'all don't want to be real. Y'all don't want to go there. That's okay. I ain't going to mess with y'all. I have problems with Christians who are so holy that they can't attract sinners. My Holy Ghost make me attract sinners, right? Churches ought to attract sinners. But as long as we're judgmental and look down our noses at people, we won't attract sinners. I'm just trying to help our church to get ready. But when we have love and we have compassion, we will do what? Attract sinners. They'll criticize. They criticize him saying, now, why is it just your master eats with public sinners? Jesus, in a way, says, I didn't come here for folk well, who think they're healthy. I came here for folk who are sick. And I didn't come for folk who think they're righteous. I came for folk who know they're sinners. Are you listening to me? One of my points of desperation is that when I come to church and hardly can find any sinners, then, you know, what's the problem? All right? Everyone has made it. We're on top of the world when it comes to our spirituality. I don't see much of conviction of sin. I see people who have already arrived. I get tired of that in the church. That's, that's a point of desperation for me, Right? It, it's everybody that we see, especially sometimes in our denomination, everybody is at the meetings or, or they're, they're already saved. We're, we're preaching to bishops and administrative assistants and superintendents and missionaries and evangelists. We sing to the same people. We talk to the same people. We zoom in the same folk. Take my title, take whatever. You can't take my anointing because it's, it's, it, 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 we got it all together. We don't see, we don't hear the conviction of sin. We don't see people running to the altar. And if we see folks jumping, jumping to the altar, dropping stuff, we what they do, right? We have two selves. We have a public self and, and, the, the, and one is false. That's who we project. That's who we want people to see. We put our best foot forward. We want to impress individuals about our public self. But can I tell you something? God sees our foreign self. God doesn't even know that's God doesn't even know that self and that and God can have a relationship with that self because that self is too pretentious and too feigned. 
but God invites sinners to bring their problems to him. This is why I made it because I've always been real about my issues. The private self, that self that's covered up the layers of embarrassment, shame and anger, frustration and failure and misery, that self that God says, come on, bring it to me. That's what I want. You don't have to suppress it any longer. You can deal with issues because when you worship God, you really see the love of God and how much he's concerned about you. Hope I'm making sense. Come unto me, all you that are laboring, heavy laden, I will do what? Give you rest. Isaiah said, come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be a scald, they shall be clean. If you're thirsty, come to the water, then drink. In the church, we need to come before God, not just with our public self. We need to come, God, come to God with our private selves because all of us have been, hear me when I say this, Humpty Dumpties. We've all sat on the wall. We've all had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty Dumpties together again. Some of us have fallen off. We've fallen off walls. Though the king's horse and the king's men said something, Said what it said about it, it says something about it. Nothing in that nursery rhyme says anything about the king. But I'm here today to tell you, I was Humpty Dumpty. The king horses couldn't do it. The church couldn't do it. The king's men couldn't do it. But I know a king that can put you back together again. No matter how many pieces you may have broken, your degrees, your position, you're not enough to keep you together. We need you to come to the Lord like He said. We, the new wine and the new cloth of joy stretches to the breaking point. The old wine skins and the old garments are false pieties. Master, why is your disciples uh, who are here don't fast and pray like John the Baptist's disciples? They did it out of legalistical. They did it on Tuesdays and Fridays. They did it on Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm messing with somebody now. And you wonder why you don't see results because you're doing it out of uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. But the Bible says, is this not the fast that I've chosen? Everyone knew that they fast and pray because they did it on the street corners and they made a fuss about it. Jesus said, how can my disciples fast and pray when I'm the bridegroom and they're the guests of the bridegroom? In those days, the reception went for a whole week. How can they fast and pray when I'm here? There's a moment coming, the scandal of the cross, when I'll be taken away, he says, that then they'll fast. But until that time come, forget about the funeral. Come on to the wedding. Come on, tell somebody, come on to the wedding. All right? I'm, I'm here today to tell you God wants us to, to get rid of this mixed up ideology. Christianity is not a funeral. Christianity is a wedding. We have something to rejoice and be excited about. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we think there's some incompatibility between the good sense and good religion. We got a lot of carnal Christians, right? We, we got a lot of people who in Christianity are cranial in their mind. We got a, uh, what I call cardiological Christians from their heart. We not only need to think good, we also have to feel good and, and watch this, not divorce anything that God says we should be walking into. He said, I come that you may have joy and that this joy might be, you may be complete. So what is best, the old or the new? I think it's the wrong question. The question is, what is old, what is new? But watch this, what is true? Does Jesus anticipate Pilate's question in the eighth chapter of John when he says, what is true? By responding to Thomas' inquiry, Lord, we don't know the way. He says, I am what? The way and the truth. What is truth? It's the word. What is truth? The complexities that we see about our churches. Right, the, the fact that they we're now seeing uh, the Catholic Church, not necessarily the Pope, but the Catholic Church to protect the church is now saying stuff about homosexuality and marriage. That now, because the Catholic Church is saying uh, we don't recognize same-sex marriages, now everybody, some people are sad and they're upset. The Catholic Church is making a stand, but I'm like, forget the Catholic Church. Forget the Church of God in Christ. What does the word of God say? Not worried about what this person said, what this person said. I'm, I'm reading, I'm, right now, I just did something on my research for my school that said, it's a great thing when leaders can walk back decisions that they make. Now, I was told when I first started passing that it was, uh, it was flip-flopping. No, it's about, hey, I thought we were going to go this way, but you know what? We're going to read, I revisit some things, we're going to do it a different way. It's okay. The complexions of our church. Martin Luther, King, Martin Luther King said it like this, 11 o'clock church hour on Sunday is the most segregated hour during the week. 
I want to tell you that regardless to what you say, regardless to how they say it, nothing has really changed. It's still true. It's segregated. There's a lot of cosmic changes, but the interiorization of things tells me nothing really has changed. We, we need to have a mindset. Here we are, all creation, where we're focused on our community. Right? We have to recognize, regardless of racial strikes, that we're made in the image of God. There's no hierarchy. I don't care how what color your cross is. I'm learning. Like, I can do ministry and not be bishop and still have global ministry. So, so, so don't focus on the color of your cross. It, now, no, we're not no knock it. You can, you can desire, he says, but don't, don't desire to the point that you got storefront ministry and, and God is saying you don't have to be stuck. You can still do things with a spirit of excellence. Are you listening to me? Worship, truth. We're not actors. We're not acting as hypocrisy. No, we're, 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 we're walking in the power of God. It's not about an event, but it's about an encounter. Can you say that with me? Worship is not an event, but it's an encounter. I need you to type that on the screen. I need you to speak that over yourself. Worship is not an event, but it's an encounter. Where, where I do what? I come into God's presence that something happens to me while I'm there. I love butter pecan ice cream. I know people love popcorn, but I can never understand the gospel of popcorn, right? You, you can put popcorn in the microwave oven. Those kernels of corn will be exposed to the same radiation, have the same butter solution mixing up in it. But when it's all over, some kernels still never pop. So that means there's always going to be some people no matter how much the event is, no matter how much they paid for it, no matter how powerful it is, they're not going to be changed until they have an encounter with God. Because when we come in the house of the Lord, we should pop. I told y'all this before in the message I preached. My life has been the life of the biscuit can. I was designed to pop out of what I mean. I was designed that even after some of that stuff rip off and don't open up, the biscuit was designed for you to take the bottom of it and hit it on the counter because it's designed to pop off. I'm, I'm able to pop off at any time in the car by myself with whoever you, st I'm able to pop off by myself. I don't need a crowd. We ought to give God some glory for what he's done. Don't be ashamed. Let the world know, right? Worship is not so much a verb as it is a noun. If I get myself together, watch this. Your will gonna follow. My will gonna follow. If you get, if I get my attitude right, then actions will follow. Are you tired of leaky wine skin? Right? Are you really tired of the patched up Christian life? Let God pull you together. God wants to do something totally revolutionary and totally radical in your life. Pressing on the upper way, new heights I'm gaining each and every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Him says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I've found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I hope on tonight I've said something to you. I'm going to ask at this time that Elder Edwards will give us a prayer and very quickly uh, lead uh, people to salvation. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do offering and we're going to get out of here. God bless you, Elder. Amen. Oh, man. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for your power. We thank you for you being God, all knowing, all seeing, God. Father God, we come to your throne right now, God, just asking, God, we need a refreshing, God. We need a, a, a refilling, God. We need a revival, God, like none other, God. Father God, we want to take the new things, God, that you're doing, God, and we want to encounter you, God, in our daily life and our worship, Father God. Father God, we ask right now, God, that you bless, God, of homes, you bless family members, you bless loved ones, God. Father God, for those that don't know you, we take the time out now. All you have to do is just repeat. Say, Lord God, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that he was born of a virgin birth. I believe that he lived on this earth. I believe that he died on the cross, but on the third day he rose with all power. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the father making intercession on your behalf. If you believe that, if you confess that with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you're saved.
And Father God, we thank you for their lives, God. We celebrate them on tonight, Father God. Thank you that you're breaking off religion, God, and tradition, God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are blessing us to go into uncharted waters, God. Thank you, Lord God, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it into, into our hearts or our minds, God. The things that you're getting ready to reveal, God. The things that you're getting ready to bring forth. Thank you that old things have passed away, and behold, all things have come become new, God. Father God, we're, we're ready, God. Father God, we're willing and we're waiting, God. Lord God, we want to move when you move, God. Order our steps in your word, God. Have, have, have us, God, to do what you want us to do, God, to be right in the middle of your will. We say yes to your will and yes to your way, God. In Jesus' name, we say yes, and it is so. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, uh, Elder Nick. We appreciate you, sir. I want you all to prepare your hearts to sow into ministry. I want everyone to sow in the word of the Lord. If you received that word, if you are saved because you've heard the priest's word and responded to faith to the appeal, I want you to get connect with us. I want you to connect with us. We accept you and welcome you to the body of Christ. Amen. We love you. But I want everyone to prepare their hearts to sow. Um, those of you that can give, give as unto the Lord. Amen. We appreciate you all. Uh, I just, it just goes without saying. Uh, I, don't, I don't say this because it's tax time. I don't say it because tax refund, because everybody don't get a refund. I say it because it's right. You so tithe. If you are not in place on Sunday, amen, you have an opportunity to sow. If you have, amen, received, amen, your stimulus, that's increase. You wasn't expecting it. Sow seed into the house of the Lord. Thank you for those of you that have been sowing, amen, that $140 in tithe. We appreciate you. But don't forget, the Bible says tithe and offering. So let's sow as unto the Lord. Amen. I purposed in my heart what I'm going to be giving. Amen. I'm sowing into the church, believing God for a harvest, because I got some things that I want God to do for me. And so that's what you do. You give. There's many ways to give. Right. Those of you that come in person, you give on Sundays. Tonight on this platform, you can give on Givelify. You can tap give and be done. You can go through our cash app, dollar sign ACNHFC. And the reality of it is, I keep forgetting, we do have PayPal. So if you would like to give that way, we have Zelle. We you can give that way. Um, if you look up uh, all creation, hey amen. We have uh, look, you, my numbers connected to the Zelle account for Bank of America. You can give that way. PayPal, look up all creation. Let's give. Dollar sign, A-C-N-H-F-C. Give the five, all creation, N-H-F-C. Look up and let's give that way. Let's sow into the life of the Lord's church. If you want to, don't want to wait until Sunday, you want to tithe off of any money that you receive this week as increase, you can go to dollar sign, A-C-N-H-F-C, and let's give as unto the Lord. Amen. I'm going to be taking my son, amen, because of, you know, his age. I want to take him this week and we're going to open up an account. Amen. I'm going to just start preparing him for when he starts working. Amen. So he can not just go out and spend money, but he can start saving. Amen. We kind of learn from our other experiences, even though I've tried to do with all the kids, I'm going to be taking Mark out. Amen. This week and, and sowing seed and we want to teach him how to invest and save. Uh, and so I'm believing God. And so I, I want you to do something right with this money. Go pay your bills up. Don't, don't go out and splurge. I know the stores are packed with us, as, as my pastor would say, splurging and redoing the bathrooms. Let's not have that mentality this time. Let's let's put something away. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the water, and in many days it's going to return. And in many days it's going to return. And so I'm 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 investing, amen, looking for investment property. I'm I'm just trying to perfect and leave an inheritance for my children's children and children are far off. Amen. Not just for me and my wife, but those that come behind me. And so I want to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. And you know what we're doing also? We're doing it also in the church. We're making sure that we're being good stewards of our funding. And so we're we're paying our bills. We, you know, I'm thankful that I heard uh additional missionary Americans both say this. She said, Lord, let there be more money that when the bills come, it can be paid. And you know, I'm seeing God do that. Why? Because of partners like you. Those of you that are not members, those of you 
that 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 are not here even in the St. Louis area. I'm telling you, this church is on good ground. We have a, a very good relationship with uh, our credit union. They, they they give us funding and financing, and 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 I'm just trying to be a good steward of that which God has placed me over. So I'm asking you, ma'am, please, ma'am, please, sir. I'm asking you to sow seed into the life of the Lord's church. If you've been struggling with time, trust him now. Trust him now. Trust him now. Give as unto the Lord. Put that decimal place one step over to the left and sow. Amen. Literally, because of uh, what the government, because I made under 75000 amen, I was able to receive stimulus. That was a time that I never thought I would be able to get it. But but I'm thankful to God, amen, that, you know, that I'm able to let it sit in the bank and not have to go touch it until I be able to put something in the account for my son. But I'm tithing. I purposed in my heart already tithing off of that, which for me would be $2,800 plus my regular tithe. So I'm giving as unto the Lord. So, ma'am, please, sir, wouldn't it be nice if the saints of God on tonight would partner with us and give on tonight? Amen. I believe that if all of us would do that, we're able to pay another mortgage. Oh, my God. That sounds so great. Your church mortgage will be paid for April. I just believe God. Please stand with us. If you want to give something extra, I know tonight is pastoral night. We normally ask for $25. You can sow in pastoral night. But more importantly, I want to stress that people should tithe as unto the Lord. All of this cost, this platform for Zoom, um, being able to do Pigeon Live, right? Being able to have the equipment, it costs. And then I, I don't have paid staff on media team, but I try to encourage them. So if you like this, and I told the church, we'll never go back to just have an in-person meaning and nothing else. We will always have a huge online presence. And I'm just believing God, amen, we get the rest of the money to buy rest of the equipment. We already have our monitors. We have our screens. We have the equipment. We just need to get rid of that that stage that you see in our church. That stage is paneling. We want it to be drywall. And we don't want to, I don't want to put cameras, I mean, not cameras. I don't put big screens with TV monitors up there and in the back of the church on Penn, I want it to be done right. And I'm believing God that the money's gonna come. And so you, ma'am, you, sir, can help us do the work of the Lord. We love you with the love of Christ. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I want you all to be praying for me and my family, pray for my children. If you don't know anybody else to pray for, pray for Futrell and his kids. Pray for the saints that you see as well as those you don't see. We love you all with the love of Christ. I know that normally we fellowship, but for the last few weeks, there are things that have to take place when I get off. So I've been a little busy. So Zoom family, forgive me. God bless everyone. I also want to just make sure that you all understand because I, you know, especially when we're after eight, I don't want to hold anybody because people have to eat dinner and get ready for work. I love you all with the love of Christ. Please understand my heart. Please understand my heart. I'm not trying to pimp anybody. I felt, I feel the need to say that. I'm not trying to pimp anybody. But I'm trying to get you to understand that God's way is not a $1.9 trillion package. God's way to stimulate the church, to stimulate the kingdom is that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is already loose in heaven. Watch God. My testimony is he's done so many great things. When I thought I was about to lose it all, trust him. Who am I talking to? You're in a situation. You know what you can do? Praise your way and give your way ultimate level of worship. I love you all with the love of Christ. I appreciate you all. Facebook family, YouTube family, go back. Go back and watch YouTube. Go back and watch this live and, and, and study it intently and see what the Lord is saying to you. I appreciate you all. We, we still ain't got past where I wanted to, but we was close. I love you all. I appreciate you all. God bless all of our visitors. You can sow, you can give. We appreciate you all. These preachers that stand with me, I love you all. Appreciate you. God bless you. Until next time, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Be in, be in place. YouTube, Facebook Live. Be in place, and we're believing God. All right? God bless you. See you all later. We love you with the love of Christ.